Hello and welcome to another TA Tech Tip. In today's Tech Tip, we show how to interpret mass spectral data obtained using the Discovery Mass Spectrometer. Interpretation can be challenging, but hopefully the information here will make the task less intimidating. In this example, a copolymer of methyl methacrylate butadiene styrene, abbreviated as MBS, is analyzed by TGA Mass Spec. Examining the TGA mass loss profile and overlaying the derivative curve shows that the mass loss seems to occur in one step at around 400 degrees C. One very simple approach to analyzing mass spectral data, if you're not searching a database commonly done with chromatographic mass spec combinations, is to try to predict the ionization products based on known empirical fragmentation patterns. There are obviously many sources in the literature on how to do this, and I've referenced some of those at the end of this video. For our example here, I'm going to start with the repeating units of the co-monomer components. You can see the structures represented in this schematic of the polymer. For polystyrene, styrene is a relatively simple molecule and we know what the likely ionization fragments will be. The first obvious possibility is the repeating unit itself, which is mass to charge 105. One common mechanism is the elimination of neutral species, in this case ethylene, to, to yield the benzyl ion and possibly benzene. Another possibility on substituted aromatics is of course the formation of the very stable tropillium ion with mass to charge 91. Another possibility is the formation of cyclopentadienyl ion indicated by mass to charge 65. This occurs due to the elimination of neutral acetylene from the tropillium ion. We should also check for the presence of other known aromatic fragmentation ions, for example, mass to charge 51 and mass to charge 39. So for our styrene component, we'll initially check for mass to charges 105, 91, 78, 77, 65, 51, and 39. For methyl methacrylate, we'll initially look for evidence of cleavage at the carbonyl, as well as at the oxygen heteroatom, yielding mass to charge 70, and 42 respectively. For butadiene, we initially look for fragments of the repeating unit representing one reactive site, showing formation of the stable allyl cation represented by mass to charge 41. The other possibility is mass to charge 27. Mass to charge 55 is the repeating unit with both active sites reacted. Well, let's look at our results. For styrene, it appears that all of our initial fragmentation ion proposals are present and accounted for. Note the prominence of mass to charge 39. This may not be what we expect, and it would be reasonable to investigate the possibility of another source of this ion. For methyl methacrylate, the two ions we propose based on the common fragmentation patterns are both present. Butadiene similarly shows all three of our proposed fragments. Notice that mass to charge 27 is higher in concentration relative to the others. This is because we're also seeing an isotope of nitrogen superimposed on the ion current since it's our purge gas in this experiment. The peak indicates that the purge gas is not the only source of mass to charge 27. If it was, we would expect to see a relatively constant ion current with no obvious peaks. In other words, it appears that our assignment in this case is probably correct. In this tech tip, we discussed how to interpret data on the Discovery Mass Spectrometer. Please subscribe for more useful tips from TA Instruments, and thank you for your interest.